Profile families can immensely add efficiency to your Revit workflows. But before we talk about how to create a profile family of your own, let's first understand what is a profile family and where all can we use it. Today is episode 34 of Revit Beginner Program and we are going to talk about just that. I've created a few examples to explain what a profile family is. So let's start with railings. The top rail here you see has a cross section of an ellipse and this ellipse is extruded along the path of the railing. Whenever you see such a structure where there is a cross section which is extruded along a path, it definitely is using a profile to control the cross section. For example, when I select this railing and I go into edit type, the top rail here is using a profile of handrail elliptical 40 by 30 millimeter. So the profile families are basically a sketch of the cross section. When I change the profile from elliptical to rectangular, for example, and I say OK to this, you'll see how the cross section changed on the same path that it was extruded. If I edit the path of my railing, you'll see the cross section remains the same and the path is updated. Let's take another example of the wall sweep. Here in this case, I've created a wall sweep for this parapet coping on this wall. The length of the coping is the same as the length of the wall. So if I change the wall, you'll see how the coping is also changing. The cross section, however, is governed by a profile family. So when I click on this parapet gap and go into the type properties, we'll see a profile family that is governing its cross section. So when I select here and choose a different size, for example here, I will choose parapet gap precast 450 instead of 300 millimeter. And when I say OK to this, the cross section changes. Same goes for the review. Let's take another example of the roof gutter. The roof gutter is created along the path of the roof border. When I select this particular roof gutter, you can see here the cross section that it is extruding along that path of the roof. If I go into the type properties, there is a profile which is governing its cross section. When I change this into a different one, for example, a little bit smaller gutter, you'll see that that has updated along the path that it was extruded. If I edit the path, the same cross section gets extruded along the revised path. Let's take another example of the slab edge. This is a structural floor underneath which I have created a slab edge. The slab edge has this cross section profile which is extruded along the path of the floor. And this cross section is again the profile family. So if, if I go to the type properties and try to change the profile of this from 600 by 300 to 900 by 450, you'll see how that gets updated. So another example I would want to share with you is of the staircase nosing. In the case of staircase nosing, the path of the staircase nosing is governed by the size of your tread in the staircase. Whenever you go into the properties of your staircase, you will see a nosing profile. This, right now, I'm here using of 20 millimeter staircase nosing. Instead, if I want to use something else, you can see how that kind of updates the cross section of your staircase nosing. So profile families are 2D families. They contain the sketch of a cross section. And these cross sections are extruded along the path of an element. If you want to learn about how to create a custom profile family for a curtain wall mullion, check out my last episode, episode 33. In the next episode, we are going to talk about how to create a profile family for a railing. So if you haven't subscribed, please do stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.